You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, Donald Trump is always describing investigations into his actions as witch hunts and the coups. But today he chose a much stronger word to describe the current impeachment inquiry he's now facing. This is what Donald Trump tweeted. So someday, if a Democrat becomes president and the Republicans win the House, even by a tiny margin, they can impeach the president without due process or fairness or any legal rights. All Republicans must remember what they are witnessing here, a lynching. But we will win. Hmm, a lynching, as in what happened to Black folks during the Jim Crow era. But folks, we got to keep in mind, Donald Trump is the master of distraction. Now, people were expressing their outrage all on social media. But here is why we're not going to fall for the okie doke, Donald. This is the real reason why Donald Trump tweeted that. Folks, it was planned. Let me say it again. This was a plan. This was a discussion that took place in the White House to throw us off track. Why? Because today, Bill Taylor, the acting U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, said in his House testimony, today, the group's investigating the impeachment that everything, including the release of military aid to Ukraine, was tied to the Ukrainian president publicly announcing investigations into Joe Biden and the 2016 election. This is what Donald Trump was trying to distract the media from. I'm going to bring my panel, Amelik Abdul, Republican strategist, Kelly Bethea, communication strategist, Rob Richardson, host of the, the Disruption Now podcast. All right, folks, let's get right to it. Right, I'm going to start with you. I talked to sources today who confirmed that Donald Trump knew exactly what he was doing by using this language. He wanted to be able to throw this out to get the media all hot and bothered and, and some folks fell for the okie doke because he wants more coverage of him using the word lynching than this Ukrainian ambassador testifying that there was indeed a quid pro quo when it came to Ukraine. That's why we're not wasting any time focusing on lynching. Rob, we're talking about Donald Trump being in big trouble when it comes to Ukraine. Yeah, when you think about it, look, look, he said he said a comment, look, water's wet, Donald Trump said something that's racially offensive. He did this, as you said, to distract about what's going on. Look, we have a, we have a traitor in the White House. I think we, we have to say that. He, we have somebody who is betraying the nation, betraying the laws. He thinks he's above the Constitution, that he's above the law. He's not. And so you have the current ambassador in there talking about, uh, talking about the fact that there was a quid pro quo. And, you know, Donald Trump, or the, current, the president occupant of the White House, uh, likes to say that there was no quid pro quo. Well, maybe he made his best Don Colleone. He made an offer he couldn't refuse. He said, I'll give you $400 million for aid, but only if you make these investigations. That is the textbook definition of a quid pro quo. It's illegal, and it's dangerous, the fact that our security would be at risk uh, just to just to, j just so we have a president who can use the power of his office against his opponent. I tell people this: if you don't like Donald Trump, look, I don't agree with a lot of his politics personally. But what but makes me nervous is the fact that he's going to try to use the power of this office to go after people. It's Joe Biden now, but it could be you next. So if you believe in America, you believe in, in the Constitution, you should be frightened. There's nothing conservative conservative about this. This is this is very scary. He's betraying our nation, and he is a traitor. Period. That's why he wants to distract. Uh, Melek, this is what Donald Trump wants to do. He wanted to throw the media off of the focus of the Ukrainian ambassador to, to folks to be all hot and bothered. Mainstream media falls for the okie doke every single time. That's why he tweeted, I was told point blank. This was a conversation that took place before that tweet went out. He knew exactly what he was trying to do. Well, I wouldn't doubt that Donald Trump knows what he's doing. That shouldn't surprise anyone. Um, to the point about the 
the comments whether or not it's a distraction. Well, this is this is also not the first time that we've heard this before. We've heard many times that things that Donald Trump do, they're they're done to distract us from one thing or the other. Whether or not whether or not that's true or not, that's always the accusation that comes out. So I understand that you spoke with your sources, and your your sources say that this is something that he's doing to distract us. Well, we've heard that before. So your sources could be right. Yeah, maybe so. But no, the idea no, that Donald sources, Trump. Now, I question my sources could be right. My sources, Kelly, are right. Well, I mean, of and course you can. would say that because you would believe it. <laughs> It's, Why wouldn't no, you no, 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 <laughs> I, 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 see, see, here's the difference, Melit, between me and the other folks you deal with. And a question of, I would No, believe. I'm on your show. We don't have to talk about see, other it, people. No, no, I'm no, 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 that's my point. When, no, no, it's my point. When you have trusted sources, mm -hmm. and the reason when you have trusted sources who have been right before, and they are right again, that's what you also base it upon. That's what we're dealing with here, Kelly. Um... I couldn't agree more. The distractions are becoming, frankly, just annoying at this point. Um, I'm su I'm not even surprised that uh, mainstream media is latching onto this because it is um, a shock factor. The fact that he would say such you know heinous things, but again, we're dealing with a stupid man. Stupid men say stupid things, and when you take those. You, when you put two and two together like that, this shouldn't be, you know, a, a, a shock to anybody. This shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. And like you said, you have an ambassador at the, uh, of Ukraine saying that there was a quid pro quo. That is news. Um, another thing that happened today, uh, one of Trump's top donors is being charged with tax evasion and donating almost a million dollars in illegal uh, campaign funds. Um, that's in federal court right now. That's real news. But Donald Trump being a racist, that's old news. Donald Trump saying something stupid, that's old news. That shouldn't be a headline right now. We should just keep it pushing and actually get to the uh, discussion at hand, which is the fact that there's an impeachment inquiry out right now, and he's scared. Donald Trump is scared as to what the Dems are going to find. And his days are numbered, and he's afraid of that. That part is news. Yeah, and I think what he's what he's very concerned about, to go to Kelly's point, he is he is concerned, he is trying to control the narrative. This is all mm -hmm. this is. So don't listen to anything else. Donald Trump is doing what he does do best. I, where, I, where I disagree a little bit is that he's not stupid on this. He's very strategic and very smart, and don't fall for it. Look, it is raining right now in D.C. Donald Trump wants to tell you that it's sunny. But the facts are real. There are not alternative facts. He's trying to make up new things. He's trying to distract you. This is a... Not only is it news, the fact that we know what happened with Ukraine, it, is, it, should, it should frighten everybody. It should frighten conservatives. When they talk about a deep state, what they're talking about, they're talking about people that are Republicans that are appointed by Trump. Obama's not in office. Hillary Clinton did not win. The people that are coming forward are people that are appointed by Donald Trump. They are Republicans. And people, no matter what conservative media, uh, conservative media is saying, what is going on right now is threatening our democracy. And this, this current president is a traitor to our country, and people should start saying that. That's the real news. This other stuff is not. Well, the problem is, unfortunately... Uh, 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 Melek, what you have here is to have this Ukrainian ambassador go before this committee and tell them point blank if that was a quid pro quo. Yep. You, have, uh, you have Mulvaney, who admitted it, then tried to walk it back, lying. You have Donald Trump, who has said there was no quid pro, quid pro quo, lying. He has castigated his whistleblower. Here is a Trump appointee, a guy who's like, I'm not going to prison for you. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the Ukrainian ambassador who was in on this, who said that also that Rudy Giuliani was there to set up a back channel discussion with the Ukrainians this is damning information against Donald Trump, Malik. Go. Uh, what do you think? Yes or no? Um, I, I don't think much of it, simply because about a month or so ago, we heard a similar conversation about Robert Mueller and him testifying and what he was supposed to let us know during the hearing. And, you know, a, a, month, no. ago, a month or so ago, There's, people were talking about impeaching Donald not, Trump over no, no, no. that. Th th so this is not I don't think much of it. This isn't, Malik, this isn't Robert Mueller. Right. The this is another bright and shiny this object, is, though. This, no, 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 no. This, this is, is the Trump appointee, the it actual doesn't, ambassador. That, that, that doesn't well, mean second, anything, the fact that you say no, no, Trump appointee. Oh, 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 stop, wait a minute. Are you telling me that the Ukraine ambassador to the U.S. 
who was in on the phone call, is directly contradicting the chief of staff and the president of the United States, and you say it's no big deal? Well, I don't think it's not a big deal to me because simply this is something that we've heard before. But if if it is... No, if, we have if, not. If, if there is... No, there, Donald Trump... Donald Trump we've said... Heard the, we've no heard before, before that the walls were about to come tumbling down. We've been here before. No, that's... So if, 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 as you say, your sources say, you know, this is something that Donald Trump no, wanted to no, do no, because no, Donald stop, Trump stop, was stop, concerned stop. about see, it... See, now you're mixing story. This is not my sources talking about the, uh, the Ukrainian ambassador. The Ukrainian ambassador to the United States... Right, was in a hearing today. Congress today. Right, right. And, and but, but, but we've today. had people tell, we've had people testify in Congress before Congress before about the Mueller investigation. You know, and, and then, as I said, there were things that the walls were going to come down. And you were absolutely so right. So what the Democrats should do, and what you should encourage your people, your people out there, and I say everybody out there in the cyberverse, go to your members of Congress and push them for that vote on the impeachment inquiry. Well, do that. So you can actually, that's a step that you can take. We don't have to talk about a what ifs or anything like that. Push the Democrats. No, no, First of all, first of all we're not discussing up. what ifs, Kelly. What we're discussing here, now hold up, what we're discussing here, Kelly, is the fact that on this day, you have the Ukrainian ambassador stating what he said took place. Now, Mulvaney admitted to in front of the press a quid pro quo. Then he tried to walk it back. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump, his perfect call. His <laughs> perfect call. In fact, even Mitch McConnell today is acknowledging we got a problem, Kelly. But to um, Malik's point, we haven't necessarily been here before specifically because there hasn't been a prima facie case of said treason, frankly. Now we have that, you know, clear cut, this is grounds for impeachment case. Um, but to uh, Malik's point, if the Democrats are not on the ball with this, it can end up like the Mueller investigation, where it's just yeah. kind of brushed under the rug, more things that Trump does, and, you know, we just have a president in here for four more years because nobody's doing anything about it. So my concern is, you know, like what Malik was saying earlier, like the Mueller report and everybody else who was doing all of these things uh, in the administration, we have proof that Trump has been committing treason. We've had proof for at least three years now, and nothing has been no, happening. But... Yeah, and then... No, no, first of all, the, the, to, to... Rob, there's a huge difference here. Yeah. The difference here is this here. Unlike any, any other thing that happened previously, none of those things precipitated or led to this impeachment yeah. inquiry. But it could this, have. This but has it... gone... This has gone to, first of all, what could have happened is irrelevant because it didn't. I'm speaking of the That's now. True. And what we're dealing with the now is that Trump now, him and his folks realize this is now different. This is a different situation to have the person sitting in the Oval Office telling a foreign entity, I will hold up your money unless you investigate my chief Democratic rival, that's a change. And to have the Ukrainian ambassador to the U.S. now flat out confirm it, Rob, yeah. that has to be troubling to the White House. Yeah, it should. I think what's different, let's, let, let, let's separate some things out here. It's There is a pattern of the same thing. There's a pattern of betraying this, uh, of betraying this nation. And I think the Mueller report was clear, and, and there was enough to impeach there. But this is a much, much easier story to see. I mean, it's really, really clear cut to your point. And, 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 the, and the president occupant of the White House is certainly more worried about it. But look, we have to make sure that people understand what's going on, because I think the walls are close to, uh, really close to crumbling in. See, not about, it's one way or another. It's, are the walls going to crumble in on all of democracy, or are they going to crumble on Trump? One or the other is going to come about. And we have to decide as Americans how that's going to go. And I think that's going to be not just on Congress, it's going to be on America. Do we want to elect a king? Do we want to throw out, throw out the Constitution? Do we want to throw out the rule of law? That's what we're doing. If we're saying this is okay, if a president can do this, a president can do anything, and there are no rules, and let's throw it out, and let's just, let's just make him king and say, you know, we don't care about the Constitution anymore. So we can, make, we can have conservatives stop pretending that they care so much about the Constitution 
when you see Trump trampling over the Constitution every single day? Well, you don't have to actually come, you don't have to compare or say anything about how conservatives feel about the Constitution. Democrats have the House. So if you want to impeach him, and as we were told, there were, I think, 10 different instances that Mueller actually um, identified where Trump act, um, obstructed justice. And now well, at 11. Well, well and, and now we have 11. So if that if the 10 weren't as import, weren't important enough or weren't a guiding force enough for the Democrats to say, okay, well, we're going to actually move forward and vote on an impeachment inquiry, then I just don't have the confidence that they'll do it now. But if they do, then more power to them. I think this is just yet something else that's going to help Trump win in 2020. But there were 10 instances, okay, I wasn't 10 instances in where Democrat, where Mueller said that Trump obstructed justice, but now we've moved on to yet another bright and shiny object that Trump gave us. Now, Trump did actually give us yeah, this. Yeah, he violated the law. Yeah, I mean, Trump actually did give us this. Mm -hmm. You know, there were things he shouldn't have had the conversations um, with the Ukraine minister. But if the notion is, is that, aha, this is the moment where Trump is going to be impeached, Okay, well, put your money, put up or shut up. That's what I said. Well, actually, I kind of agree with that. I'll just say yeah. this, but we're making the argument that uh, because he got, because you got away with the crime before, you should get away with the next crime? Is that the argument? Like, but I think ten, that's, I think that's a bad argument. Crimes, trust but me, there were 10 crimes. Trust me, uh, trust me, this, trust me, this ain't R. Kelly. Bottom line here is this here. What, Democrats Berlin? moving this direction. Donald Trump suffered a serious blow today to have his Ukraine ambassador to the United States go before Congress and say, yes, indeed, there was a quid pro quo. Let's see how the Donald tries to wriggle out of this one. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Lifelock Jazz Experience taking place in Cabo, November 7th through the 11th. Of course, if you want to attend, uh, go to lifeluxjazz.com, L-I-F-E-L-U-X-E-J-A-Z-Z.com. But if you cannot be in Cabo for those four days, 14 different uh, amazing artists, then, of course, you could live stream it. Get, get your live stream pass at gfntv.com. That's gfntv.com. As I said, amazing artists, Gerald Albright, Alex Bunyong, Kirk Whalum, Donna McClurkin, uh, Shalia, Roy Ayers. Uh, man, it's going to be an unbelievable uh, three-day extravaganza, and so uh, look forward to you participating. And again, get your live streaming pass to cover those three days, all 14 concerts. You'll be able to watch right here on your phone, on your uh, iPad computer. Does not matter. Go to gfntv.com. That's gfntv.com to get your live stream pass. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. 